Hey y'all, welcome to this video. My name is Blake and today I'm gonna be playing in some makeup, catching up with y'all, and filming just a regular old YouTube video. I have a little bit to catch y'all up on. It's been a lot going on for me. First of all, hi. I know it's been a while and I have some makeup that I haven't really gotten to use. I haven't done my makeup. I almost feel like I haven't done my makeup since January 1st or like December, very early January. Most of all of these things were like sent to me in PR and I just never got a chance to use them. I think these were all sent to me like late at the end of last year. I have this YSL mascara, this eyeshadow palette from Smashbox that's really cool. It's in a star shape and it has some like shimmery shades in it. These are colors that I probably would not pick but we'll see what we can do. Also these setting powders from Milk Makeup and it came with four different shades. So we'll try this out. I have my Ride or Die uh, setting powder, the Maybelline, um, Maybelline, I'm not be forgetting my, it's been a while, it's been a while. Maybelline Fit Me Loose Finishing Powder. I've been using that, the Maybelline Fit Me, over five years now, I know I found, I started using it like high school, like probably senior year. And ever since I found that one, I never stopped using it. It's been the best one. I And they last a long time for me as well, but I know I probably used that one for my prom makeup. And back then I was trying to make sure there was no like flashback. And so that one worked really well for me. Um, and I haven't tried other ones just because flashback is so like iffy and you never know. So once I found that one, I just never stopped. I have some lashes. Now these lashes I've actually had for a little, I got a little while. I got these at Ross in Guam, but I never used them because I was barely wearing makeup out there. In there with the Smashbox, it came with like a mini uh, primer and it also came with a highlighter. So I think this is a highlighter. So I got four colors, translucent medium, I think is the one that I wanna use, but there's also translucent deep, translucent light, I don't, I think that one's too light, and then translucent very deep. It's a loose setting powder, so maybe I could use some of it for my face as well. This is the setting powder that I, this is my setting powder that I always use. This is translucent medium. I don't know if y'all can see that. Oh, actually, no, never mind. Translucent deep matches pretty closely actually. This is medium deep in the Maybelline Fit Me. Bear with me in this video, it's just been a while since I filmed a video and I just feel one, like a little scared <laughs> and two, rusty of course, it's just out of practice. But yeah, long story short, I just haven't been feeling well um, and it started like mid-January, so right at the top of the year, had a lot of momentum going into 2024 and um yeah so the reason why i haven't been feeling well i'll probably talk more about at a later time i just didn't know at this at this point in time i don't know how i want to talk about it when i want to talk about it but i didn't want that to prevent me from getting back to work because i do feel a little bit better now so in the meantime try to just i'm just trying to get back on track but Eventually, y'all know everything, so don't even worry about it. It's not a secret, it's just like a matter of time, really. I meant to write down some talking points. I wanted to talk about all the shows that I've been watching um, over the last couple of months, because I've been watching a lot of TV because I haven't been able to do much. I do like this hydrating primer from Smashbox. It's kind of just like a, a moisturizer. And, um, oh, I don't have like an in-depth skincare routine. I only have, it's like, I cleanse my face and then I moisturize it. So I don't have, when I'm putting on makeup, I don't mind adding a little bit more of a moisturizer because sometimes my it can just kind of like dry, dry out a little bit. Not like terribly, but if I'm gonna put on makeup, I think it does turn out better when it's not dry, when my skin's not dry. So I usually, yeah, I do that one first and then I'm gonna do the Milk Makeup Hydro Grip. Okay, I'm gonna talk about the show in a second, but for the makeup, I haven't done my makeup. That's why I said I just wanted to play in some makeup because I haven't done my makeup like literally all year. Uh, I would probably say the last time I had, I wanna say, cause I went to my aunt's house and we had like a, you know, on New Year's day get together. And I don't even think, I might not have had makeup on then because we had 
drove did a road trip to South Carolina where my husband's family lives so I was just so tired I probably didn't even put on makeup then and then I remember the first couple of weeks of the year I was getting like just trying to get ready I was talking to my mom the other day and I was like I'm just so stressed out I don't know like what to do about work right now because I hadn't been feeling well and I've been gone again and that was completely not the plan for this year at all but there was nothing I can do about it it just is what it is it's not you know like life happens sometimes so um like doing my hair um I needed to braid my hair right now it's just like a little bit easier I don't have to wake up and worry about it besides the boho part which I, I talk about in I filmed kind of doing my hair and I'm filming like how what I thought about it so that probably would be like a short little video in itself and y'all can see like my thoughts about it so it's a little bit maintenance with the boho but still braids nonetheless filming like hair content right now more than like once a month um well, i'll say natural hair content right now is kind of not the best idea um and so my mom was like you should just just you know set it up in your second room and you know do some makeup and um i was like yeah i could do that <laughs> i'm gonna do some color correcting and i have the fenty beauty um matchstick and pumpkin i was hesitant about talking through this video because I haven't done my makeup in a while and I'm like, should I just do a like voiceover? Sometimes I love a, a voiceover and sometimes depending on what it is, it's like, oh, I would love to see them talking. I don't know. Some voiceover videos are great and then sometimes you just want to, but they don't always feel as connected, I guess. I don't know. And I feel like I probably should come back talking <laughs> and then we can do a voiceover next time. I don't know. Yeah, let me not feel rushed because I really do want to take my time because I have not, my point with saying I haven't done my makeup all year is because I really want to just sit down and do my makeup. But with the glasses and not having contacts, I was like, that's probably why I haven't worn as heavy as makeup. I haven't had contacts since, oh, I don't even know. I can't even tell you, but I probably will go ahead and order some more. I, I've been feeling like I just want to wear them a little bit more sometimes but i have loved the glasses phase and just getting comfortable again in glasses because growing up glasses was a thing that somehow like made you less pretty or something like that you know i don't know i don't know if it was like that for everybody but like for a girl it was like glasses gave you this kind of look um especially like in a school setting and so as i started wearing contacts sophomore year in high school and it the the response you get from not wearing glasses is you know like wearing glasses <laughs> uh is like a less attractive thing because everyone's like oh my gosh you know immediate compliments when well, you're not wearing your glasses so i kind of stuck to that for a long time and wearing contacts is sometimes just annoying and um like when you're sitting at home wearing your glasses like it's just so comfortable and i kind of wanted to reframe my mind i guess around glasses because i always liked wearing my glasses i don't have those same that same mindset but every now and then like when i want to really do makeup and stuff like that i would prefer to have my um contacts in to do my makeup and to like show off the makeup because I haven't really practiced makeup with glasses, but when I have worn makeup, I probably, no, 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 okay, yeah, yeah. When I have worn makeup like over Christmas and stuff like that with my glasses, um, the glasses slide a bit easier with on my nose and things like that. So sometimes it's a little bit annoying wearing makeup with glasses. That's my point. I don't know if I'm gonna do any crazy eyeshadow, but I am gonna put on some foundation. This foundation that I use, I really do like. I feel like actually makes my makeup look better. For a long time, I was a no foundation person and I would just do the concealer. But with this foundation, which is the Born This Way, it doesn't look foundation-y. And it just makes um, the makeup look even better. Okay, yeah, this is the same shade as the one that I use already right now. Okay, back to shows. I was going to talk about The Bachelor because I'm watching The Bachelor. I watched Bachelor, the last season of Bachelor in Paradise, and then I went straight into this season of The Bachelor with Joey. I've watched a couple various seasons over the over the years of The Bachelor and The Bachelorette. So I didn't watch The Bachelorette um, this last season, but my mom did, and so I was kind of like in, in and out of it. Um, but I did decide to watch The Bachelor, 
and um today is monday so the finale comes on tonight so i think i'm gonna i usually watch it on hulu the next day but i think i'm gonna watch it live if i don't forget i don't even know what time it comes on it's four right now so i should be fine i'm gonna do my foundation now Too faced born this way um foundation in chai and i usually only just do one pump of this i don't even go crazy just like a couple of dots on my face i'm doing like my old routine just trying to like remember everything that i did and I wore this uh, foundation for my wedding. Towards this last half of the season, I have been kind of an annoyed <laughs> with um, Joey because of the way that he is like acting <laughs> uh, with the girls and being and not feeling like he's gonna get chosen and stuff like that. And to me, that just doesn't make sense because I don't know. Okay, I I watched some YouTube videos on it, and so I know like just because you make it to the end, like it doesn't always end up you know happily ever after some people like a person has left with nobody or i don't know it doesn't always end up happily ever after but i mean everybody is on the show the girls are telling you they're falling in love with you and i don't know either he's like that or they really played it up with like the editing and the way that they told the story but i just found that to be quite annoying but i since like the middle of the season i have always been I really like uh, Kelsey and right now at the end it's Kelsey and Daisy so I, I'm i pretty sure I know I watched um, like some YouTube videos on it so I know he's gonna pick her I'm pretty sure um don't really care for Daisy so I've been like please don't I don't want to see Daisy no 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 okay next is a concealer which is the one this way concealer in maple see the foundation I just feel like it dries it just kind of it's on there but I can still see my I use a little bit it's medium to full coverage but I only use a little bit I don't ever kind of build it up that much and maybe I will try next time but it never it doesn't feel like I'm have a lot on it doesn't look like it so I guess I kind of use it as a lighter coverage I've always been rooting for um Kelsey and I know everyone uh, likes Maria and I do like her too on her own I don't know about their I didn't I wasn't like 100% on their actual relationship, but I did like her on the show. And you know, the little interest that the the drama with her and the other girls um, gave. But yeah, that's a lot. That's what I'm looking forward to watching tonight. Last weekend, I watched Homicide New York on Netflix, which is, it's a show created by Dick Wolf who makes all of the Law and Order. So it's like a true crime version of Law and Order and they um it's the homicide detectives in manhattan and i am not a true crime person um so i was looking for something to watch and but i do love law and order i can't watch true crime but i love law and order i watch all of them law and order svu organized crime so i was clicking on it and i was like oh this is kind of interesting but i thought that it was cr uh, true crime or true stories and so i'm like uh that might be a little too scary just the fact the the fact that they're telling real stories like this is real life it's not fiction where i can just pretend <laughs> you know be you know like take ca um caution of like things that may happen in the world but i'm not i don't know specific names dates places that these things actually happen so true crime just always freaks me out i i tried getting into it like watching um true crime like people uh, girls who did like makeup and told stories and stuff like that and I watched a couple and I got to one where um, the girl was telling a story on, I think it was Jeffrey Dahmer. And when I tell you, I got sick to my stomach, like almost throw up just from her telling the, the true story. I never watched them after that. And I was like, I can't do it. Yeah, just the fact thinking like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh that's like real people. I could be walking, uh, you know, like, crossing paths with people like that I hate it's just not a mindset that I can handle and I know that those things happen but I don't like thinking about that all the time because it'll just make me think about it too much so anywho I did decide to watch it I was like uh, let me just see and then when it was coming on I saw that it was created by Dick Wolf and I was like oh, okay I might like this um, and I did like it and I was able to watch it because I have a few reasons one reason I do like Law and Order is because most of it's very heavy traumatic um, topics 
but they're told in a way that are is kind of palatable. So um, for one, the things are implied. Like all of the traumatic events and things are mostly implied. They might be said and when they're like showing, it's kind of implied. Like we don't actually see these things happen. You might see like a lead up or you'll see an after, but if you don't see it actually happen, I think that is the classy way to go about it. It's a little bit, you know, tasteful where you just like, ooh, 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 you don't have to shudder thinking about the heinous things that are going on on the show. And I think that's why I can watch it and why I have always been able to watch it because I've been watching Law & Order since I was probably like 10. I don't know. <laughs> um, and so this one, it was true crime, but it was based on the family's the family's perspective, the family and the homicide, firstly the homicide detectives, but then it took you to the families. It also gave a little uh, backstory on like the policemen's and women's lives and also um, how they might've interacted in that time, in the time as well. Yeah, you saw like some emotion from them and you kind of got like a real, you got insight into how real people can do these kinds of jobs. It's not easy. Um, they have a hard time, just like you would have a hard time learning about the story. Like they're human too. And usually they just might be gifted in like specific things that help them do that kind of job. Yeah, I think it kept kind of like the human emotion at the forefront. And it did not focus on the, um, the person who did the crime that much. It, it, more, it focused on the victims and their families a little bit more. So I wasn't learning a backstory on the person who committed the crime. And you know, sometimes you can just like, a lot of times, like if it's like a serial killer or something like that, you might, they might go into their history and you learn a lot about them and you're in their brain. Sometimes it's just too much. It's too much. I don't need to, I mean like, those people are very sick and it's just like, it's just too much. So we stayed on the other end, like the victims and the families. And so it was more tear jerking, you know, like made you feel, but it wasn't, it wasn't too much. Just a little bit, be, just because I'm sensitive to those kind of shows. But if you watched your crime, that would probably be a piece of cake. So I watched that, it was, um, it's on Netflix and it's five episodes and I watched them like all in one day. <laughs> But it was really interesting. You also kind of got a little bit of uh, how the police uh, works and the way that they were talking, the things that they show on Law and Order, they kind of like lined up like the things on Law and Order are, you know, probably as true as they can be. So that was pretty interesting um, as far as like, you know, like the inner workings of like the job kind of thing. So yeah, I enjoyed that. But once I saw it was made by Dick, well, I, I was pretty sure that I was going to. I'm gonna do some cream bronzer contour with the e.l.f. 16 hour camo concealer and I downsized my brushes and I'm like is this all the brushes I have but at the time I was like I don't need this I don't need any of this I don't need any of this sometimes I do that ah this is what I wanted to use uh dang it oh well next time i haven't bought much new makeup like i said i haven't even been wearing it so i do kind of want to go makeup shopping but this has made me remember wait you like to do makeup where have you been you've been gone i'm gonna do powder bronzer too so i'm not gonna go crazy i do want to try some cream blush though I've been watching some videos, blushes. I always wanted to try that, the Rare Beauty one. And anytime I went in to buy it, the shade that I wanted wasn't there. And then I guess I never wanted it bad enough where I would order it online. But now I see Elf has like a dupe of that or, you know, something similar. So I want to try that. Even though I do, I'm not crazy about cream blush because I always do powder on top but I don't know it could be fun so now for the moment of truth I'm gonna do a uh, semi under eye with the milk makeup powder setting powder has always been like a tricky thing for me where sometimes they just act weird and this one 
eh, is acting weird. It is does a, it's doing a little something on my skin where the texture looks a little weird. The color is nice and it's for the most part blending it how I like my powder to, but it's okay. I will try the lighter one. Let me see. Uh, okay. Maybe it's just finishing down a little bit darker. So let me see. Oh, but this one is way lighter. Oh. <laughs> Glad I didn't use this one. Okay, yeah, I think this, the um, deep is a little bit darker than the, my normal setting powder. And then the medium is lighter. So I'm not mad at having a lighter one though. Sometimes I want like to be a little bit brighter. I'm not mad at that on camera. It's, it's looking bright. I don't have my glasses on, but it does look bright. But I think it'll get toned down in a second. So I'm setting powder, MAC Mineralized Skin Finish. Another thing that I've been using for at least five years now. Um, well, actually I used it, it was my favorite maybe five years ago and I used it for a couple of years and then I stopped and then I came back to it. And now it's gonna be a staple. It just works for me. And I use the shade Dark Deep. Wait, I kind of like the light under eye. I know like a, an intense light under eye is kind of like a, a look. Maybe it was a little while ago. And I feel like that higher contrast is kind of what makes a little, a look like uh, more dramatic, right? So I usually stay on the more toned down side. And sometimes I kind of want to take it up a notch and I think that might be something. Um, I am gonna go over my under eye with this and that helps me combat a uh, flashback. And it will kind of tone down this lightness a little bit. Is it still bright or did that just take it all the way away? Also, does this foundation shade still match me? I think so. Bronzer, uh, Fenty Beauty Sun Stalker and Mocha Mommy. I haven't tried any new bronzers. Like I said, I haven't tried any new makeup really but the products that i use are products that i'm always gonna have like when i run out they'll be like repurchased because i know that they just work but i will try some new stuff soon um but these products that this makeup routine that i have now is a foolproof routine i don't have to worry about it i don't have to think about it i have the routine like completely down i could do it in like 10 minutes um and i would say like it's my my routine but i do want to try some new stuff just for fun this bronzer being one of my favorite products the shade because for a long time bronzer like there wasn't a good bronze uh bronzer for brown skin like darker skin it was like you can kind of contour but like a warm bronzer that was hard to find and now there's so many options but once I use this one, this has been, always been my favorite shade. It's super uh, warm and red, and that works for me. I'm not neutral. I think I'm warm, uh, red undertones, or like orangey, yellow, golden, something like that. Either way, whether whatever I am, I just like this color on me. <laughs> and I it, it works for me because I do kind of use it on my cheeks, kind of like in a blushy way, so. I like that it looks like that. But if you're looking for more of a contour, this isn't it. And I have, sometimes when I want to contour, I have a different product for that. And then I'm gonna do my blush combo, which is a, one of them is this old pink blush from Shot Miss A. And then the other one is a Sephora a br a blush fascinated i don't know if they still sell these this is old <laughs> but this one's in frenzy i probably had this one since 2018 2019. i threw away a lot of the makeup that i had then but this is one that i kept because i really liked it and then i mixed that with the fascinated which is an orangier one and it has a little bit of a shimmer okay i am gonna do some eyeshadow and i think i'm just gonna start with some bronzer on my lid what else did i watch um 
I watch a lot of basketball these days. Um, my husband likes watching basketball and I like watching basketball now, which is pretty cool. Like I actually like that. I like watching it with him um, because there's so many games like it's I, it would constantly be on the TV. But I get into it like now we can kind of like have a little bit of a conversation. Sometimes I ask him a little bit of questions, but I'll be like talking like I know what I'm talking about. And then, you know, we like have a conversation about it. But I also just enjoy watching it because it has nothing to do with me. Um, it, it's truly like a true, pure entertainment don't uh, it has not I, when I say it doesn't have anything to do with me I sometimes I have a hard time watching YouTube videos just because it's hard not to think about work without watching YouTube videos um every now and then I can when I'm watching completely different topics which is what I've been watching more recently just other stuff that has nothing to do with like kind of my genre of like beauty you know lifestyle that kind of stuff you know I wish I could watch all the girls but it's too much sometimes for me to handle it's really easy for me to like compare and stuff like that and so when i just want to be when i don't feel like being stressed out and stuff um i can't watch all that so this eyeshadow palette which is pretty cool in the star shape i like the, the shape of a star i know how to do my makeup but i'm very out of practice when it comes to eyeshadow so the only eyeshadow that i do is like a smoky eye and that's my favorite look anyway um just like smokiness uh, i don't really do like cut creases or even just like a lot of shimmer if i do shimmer it's like all over the lid kind of thing so i do kind of want to try out some looks that are just like everyday looks when i do eyeshadow it goes like too i feel like it's too dramatic for like an everyday kind of thing so a little pink on the lid i also don't know how to do eyeshadow for the eye shape and eyelid that i have because i just have like a crease line but it's not like hooded but it i don't know is it so because when i do like shimmer on the lid for instance it could be blended but then when my eyes are open it kind of looks more harsh so i think sometimes i do bring it up over that crease part and maybe yeah Okay, I kind of forgot to do my eyebrows. I don't know if I do them before or after all of this because uh, I'm usually not doing all of this, but um, we'll just do them after that's fine. I've, I've had um, routines where I've done them before and after. If my brows are done, which they are, I just did them today, it doesn't matter. Okay, I put some of this um, Morphe color on top. And then, yeah, I'm just going to blend that out a little bit with some of these other like pinkier shades. This is my favorite palette. I still love this palette. This is a Morphe palette, Morphe 35M. I remember when I first saw this, I was like, oh my gosh. These are like the prettiest colors. Um, and then as for this one, I wanted to see if I could do like a little um, highlight shade. This one has some um, good colors too, like that this pink color. I don't have anything like that, so that's fun. And the green it's also got a gray in there that or bluish gray that could be interesting some dark purples a lot of colors go purple on me like i would say this is kind of like leaning purple but i just wanted to add a little bit lighter on the inner corner okay i'm gonna do some tight line and a wing with the urban De urban decay glide on pencil and then i have this lollipop liner by beauty bakery now we get to try the YSL mascara. For a while I was on I couldn't find a good mascara, but I eventually did and I kind of settled on um the L'Oreal Lash Paradise. Which is kind of a do for the better than the Too Faced Better Than Sex, which I do like that one, but I don't like spending the money on it. So this one and the real thing are the best mascaras for me. And then I also had been trying out the Milk Makeup Kush Mascara. This one was also sent to me. And um, once it kind of gunked up a little bit, like, you know, got a little bit older, it was really good too. So I like this one too. But it's a higher end one, so I don't know if I would actually repurchase it. Um, as well as using a lash primer, I think that helped with, uh, if you want to just wear your own lashes with mascara, I think a lash primer does help. I got these from Ross. Let's see how they do. Hopefully the band's not 
too thick but it's just like these and like i said i got them in guam so usually i've always gotten my lashes from like the beauty supply and stuff like that but it wasn't a lot of options there and sometimes they were really expensive so these are really cute at the bottom that's what i would probably would normally go for but i think i'm gonna do kids oops these are the top there's so many okay back to show talk there's so many things i watched but i just can't remember i should have i forgot to make the list <laughs> probably would have been a lot more interesting if i no i know i also watched um well way back when a lot of stuff on netflix went out a lot a little bit i watched queen charlotte i know that was uh a lot of people were talking about that when it first came out uh, i just recently watched it and i enjoyed it i did enjoy it i thought everyone was it was good it was really sweet um but i, I didn't hop on it because i didn't love bridgerton i watched one season bridgerton just had a lot of like sex scenes sometimes it's, it's just unnecessary what else i watched um what was that show called in the dark i think with the main character she's blind she has a guide dog and look that the first season was really good season one and two i think it had four seasons by the fourth one it was off the rails and I hate when shows do that, where it's like, they get, it, show, it starts out as like a, a well-written show. And then, you know, going into season two, they kind of have to create a new storyline. And then by four, it's just outrageous. Like completely, like how did we get here? <laughs> I know it's fiction, but I mean, completely unrealistic. That one kind of just went really crazy by the end of it. The main character was extremely unlikable. Actually, almost all the characters were extremely unlikable. You know, the they were very flawed, but I think why it was so annoying to watch by the end of it is because there was no character that you could love. And the main character was the most unlikable. And so it ended very weird to me. I didn't like how it ended. I watched a show, I think it was on Paramount. Or was it on Netflix too? It was called School Spirits. That was pretty good. I think there's a new season coming. That one ended kind of on a cliffhanger. So you kind of knew there was suppo there's supposed to be a season two. Um, and it kind of, the ending made you think a little bit like, whoa, 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 wait. Huh? That one was good. That one's about a, a girl who dies and is like haunting her school. I don't know if you call it haunting, but in the afterlife she's stuck in her school oh of course i watched love is blind um the latest season and i also watched a lot of commentary on it I, I, that show is only really good if you can if you have somebody to watch like comment like commentary videos on it on youtube um but i'm kind of over that show now just because of um, I know they made like a, in the reunion they made a lot a big deal about like cloud and going on there for the right reasons and stuff like that but literally that's what everybody go it, it wasn't like specific people but, like everybody went on there because why is everybody in interviews ads like that's what they went on there for nobody goes on TV if they don't want to be on TV D nobody I don't I <laughs> at least not in today's time like there's no way you don't you sign up for a tv because you that you think that you truly think that's your last resort for finding love or like winning money no you want to be on tv and everybody knows you know you can get popular from being on tv like and so i just i i can't believe that like every single person didn't go over the, on there because they wanted to be on tv or the, they would be the exception but yes so i just feel that um it's it's very fake now and their end goal is not like the point of the show it's just to you know launch their career in i don't know being a public figure or whatever and um the actual show is boring because they're not they're it's all about the drama i hated how the one couple that actually got married we barely got to see their story so when, by the time they got married we weren't really invested 
even on the reunion we did like we, it's just like they were like the side the side thing so it's like y'all are kind of calling out people for clout but the show is only focusing on the drama so you can't i mean come on now yeah i know there's more seasons already like filmed and stuff so i don't i don't know if i'm gonna watch them i was more annoyed with it than i was like entertained and reality show reality tv can do that like it can quickly just become very annoying and not entertaining at all and and you leave completely unsatisfied like yeah, annoyed like you shouldn't have like negative emotions like that watching tv because I, I tried to give like a uh, real housewives a chance and stuff like that can't do it can't do it um okay still haven't done my brows i kind of forgot about them but i have a new fresh brow pencil my favorite pencil is the sephora retractable brow pencil i have the color oh i also forgot to tell you in addition to not being well over the last few and a half months i also had to get my uh, wisdom tooth pulled and i didn't i wasn't under i just got local anesthesia so i got an injection which numbed me and i was just sitting there awake for the whole thing <laughs> I closed my eyes during the procedure, but I mean, when I, I, that was something that I would never do it. Like at all costs, I would probably avoid having to do that again. Um, I don't care to go, I don't care to go back to the dentist. <laughs> um, it's like a bizarre experience that just feels like you it shouldn't be like that, but nope, that's standard practice. Um, I was telling my dad, I was like, at one point I feel like his knee was on the table trying to pull my tooth out. He was like, yeah, they do that. I'm like, if my eyes were open, I probably would have ran out of the room. Not to mention, so I go in knowing, okay, I'm, um, I'm gonna be awake. Like, what, what is this, what is the local industry gonna be like? Like, am I gonna feel this? So I, I kind of like, shed some tears because i'm like well no i go in and i'm scared and he's like, okay we're ready and he goes in to put the he was like, i'm gonna put some numbing gel and he immediately just like injects me with the local anesthesia the um numbing injection i guess that hurt in itself and he and it was just like a long needle and he went into my jaw and was like <sighs> and that made me like kind of i was like having to force myself to not get up so the numbing started happening and then after after that i'm like kind of crying because i'm like if that was just the that was just the part that was supposed to that was just the numbing and it then it didn't i mean i didn't feel any of it coming out or anything it was just all the noises three people in my mouth well two people in my mouth there was three people in the room you know the doctor and then the nurse and there was one more and at some point she had to like hold my jaw um the drilling he would like lean he would the drill would be on my tooth so I still felt the drill and it was warm and I and that kind of like made me jump a little bit sometimes because it was like it's hot and it sounds like you're sawing me oh my gosh it was terrible but I just felt my chin and it made me remember um I still haven't gotten all my feeling back like my chin and my gums and my teeth like it's getting better, I can tell, because I was a little worried. I'm like, it's been kind of a couple of weeks after, and I just still, it, I, the feeling is off. Like when I touch it, it, it feels more like a painful sensation. But that it was kind of like on a wider area for the last couple of weeks. But this week, it's I feel like it's a little bit smaller. So I think eventually it will get better. But never want to have to do that again. Um, I have four wisdom teeth come in. The top two came in fine. It's a lot of teeth in there, but they came in fine. The bottom two came in impacted. And the one that was really irritated um, was the worst of the two. And I went in because it hurt so bad. Um, I've dealt with the pain with them growing in over the last couple of years. For you know a couple of days, I just have like really bad toothache and I get over it, but this time, um it was really painful like up into my neck in my ear and when i went in for the x-rays he said that it was sitting on the nerve so 
that's why I was like, it hurt extra bad. So I knew I had to go through with it. But I did initially want to get both bottom two um, out because those do hurt me from time to time. Um, but the other one wasn't, uh oh, the other one wasn't as bad. And he was like, we'll start with one and see if you want to do the other. So after we finished that one, I was like, get me out of here. I mean, I'm like running out. He's like, do you want to do the other one? Mm -mm, not at all. So afterwards, <sighs> couldn't take any hard medication. So I was dealing with that pain. It was so terrible. <laughs> but it's healed up uh, nicely, I guess. I don't know. Some, I think there's still a hole back there. Yeah, it's kind of like healing, but it's like a, a pocket kind of right now. Uh, like a small pocket and food kind of gets stuck and I have to like constantly like swish water around my mouth but yeah that's over with I just have some residual like numbness in my chin and inside of my mouth like in the gum and on my teeth like when I touch these teeth in the front they feel weird so that's that's kind of annoying hopefully it comes back fully I originally wanted to get all four of them out because I do want to um, like get braces or some kind of you know aligners, but I think I'll just get the second, the other bottom one out, and that'll be it. And I'll just live with the top because those are fine. There. Just putting some edge control on my brows. I don't have any brow gel. I've gone, I've gone back to edge control for now because I've tried some brow gels. The best one that I tried was that NYX brow glue but it wasn't great. First off, we gotta start with some lip liner, same old lip liner, trendsetter. I do wanna try some new lip liners because I've been using these and I don't even know if you can really get them anymore. I don't know if they still sell them like that. I feel like I might be outdated on the lip liner, on the brown lip liner. But when I found them, I really liked them. I bought like backups, so I've just been using these. Nothing wrong with that. Um, so yeah, this is Morphe Trendsetter. If you can find it, Morphe, Morphe's lip pencils um, had really good brown shades. There's Trendsetter, there is Richie Bar, and um, yeah, Richie is darker. Trendsetter is in the middle. Bar is a lighter one, and then there's also one called Vibes, which is more like a reddish brown. And then also have like a, a black one called Dark Room, and. I haven't needed for a lip pencil since I had all of those. They're all different shades of brown and they cover all the bases. I actually could have even done bar one shade lighter. This one is a more, this is here for it. It's a matte lipstick by Smashbox. something cooler this is Fenty cream gloss bomb cream and honey waffles and um, some setting spray this is the urban decay all nighter yeah I need to get some contacts because I don't want to put my glasses back on I can't even really see the full look but I just know it looks really good and the glasses is gonna do something different but it's fine um I had these glasses on I finished like I'm not I don't hate it actually oh with these glasses I got these glasses these are from glasses USA I got these when I did a partnership with them these a pink pair and um a pair of sunglasses and I I like these and then I didn't and I haven't worn them for a, a, a while probably like over a year but the other ones all those newer frames that I got um, were a little heavy for me more recently and I was like I just need my and my everyday glasses broke I need to get those repaired and I was like oh I have these I completely forgot about these and I've been liking them so I had a lot of fun I hope I get um, see y'all very soon it was good you know getting back into my normal uh everyday life but i was just very eager 
to get back to work. So I wanted to, you know, go ahead and attempt to make my comeback and we'll just see how it goes. I take it day by day these days. I don't think about what I'm doing tomorrow. Just what I'm doing today. Yeah, I, I enjoy the makeup. If there's any other kind of like makeup stuff you want to see, definitely let me know. But I hope y'all enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.